Moving on to Africa, where Russia is trying to expand its influence, this time through investments. Moscow plans to build a new fuel pipeline. It will be in the Republic of Congo. This pipeline will link a western port city to the capital. It is a joint venture, but Russia controls 90% of it, 9-0. Moscow will supply the funds. It will provide equipment. It will send personnel for construction and even provide fuel if needed. In return, Congo will just offer tax relief. So basically, it's a joint venture just in name. This is Moscow's pipeline in Congo. Originally, the project was announced in 2017, but the pandemic delayed it. Then there was a war in Ukraine. So finally, Moscow is bringing it back now in 2024. The question, though, is why now? And the answer is quite simple. Russia wants to expand it, its footprint in Africa, and it's doing so by wooing the continent. Congo is on top of this list. In the month of June, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov visited the Central African nation. He stressed on diplomatic cooperation. And that very month, the Congolese president went to Moscow. He met with the Russian president. And they discussed their growing ties. Putin even gave him a state award. We've made a decision to award you with a Russian state award, so let me proceed with this honorable mission. For the great contribution to the development and strengthening of relations between the Russian Federation and the Republic of the Congo, by a decree of the President of the Russian Federation, Denis Sassou Nguesso is awarded with the Order of Honor. This was the Congolese leader's second visit to Moscow in less than a year. He was there in July 2023 for a summit, and this year he returned again. That's definitely a good sign for Moscow. And it's not stopping at Congo. In April this year, Moscow sent military trainers to Niger. They will train soldiers. Also help establish an air defense system. It's also sent instructors to Burkina Faso. Russia has also signed military partnerships with two other nations. So you get the gist. Russia is on a charm offensive here. It is building pipelines, it is offering military support, it has offered free grains in the past. What is Putin trying to do here? He's looking to counter Western influence where he can, and Africa is arguably the best place to do it. It's the second largest continent in the world, it has the youngest population in the world, and it is growing fast. Africa is home to 30% of the world's mineral reserves. It has 40% of the world's gold, and it sees the West through the lens of its colonial past, Putin is looking to make the most of that. You see, the Ukraine war has divided the world. Countries were quick to choose sides, but Africa did not. It refused to back UN resolutions condemning Russia. African countries did not want to get drawn into a Cold War-like situation. They wanted to avoid camp politics. And for Moscow, that was important. So it's trying to build on it with the help of military, economic, and diplomatic initiatives. Militarily, there's weapons trade and the operations of the Wagner Group. And diplomatically, there's lobbying at the United Nations. But will all of this work? Well, let's look at Moscow's footprint. Right now, it's one of the key players in the continent, but it needs to amp up its investment. In 2019, Putin vowed to double bilateral trade within five years. That has not happened. Trade is stalled at $18 billion per year between Moscow and Africa. Foreign direct investment is abysmally low, and Russia doesn't offer much aid either. Plus, there are other players in the mix, other compelling players like China, the United States, and France. They're all vying for influence in Africa, and they're also pumping in a lot more money. So Russia needs to catch up. The pipeline in Congo is a move in that direction.